singularity. I'm going to be telling you stuff today that I haven't told before, so I haven't said before to anyone, so I guess it doesn't get any worse than that. <laughs> anyway. Do you want to hold on to your camera? Sure. All more right. So, um, first of all, thank you all for coming here today. Um, my original topic of conversation was supposed to be the technological singularity, which is um, what I'm kind of all about which is what I have been about for the last three years of my life, and which is probably what I will be in the next three years at least. But um, I'm also a blogger and a podcaster, and while I do not consider myself to be successful yet as a blogger or as a podcaster at all, based on what I've seen in the previous sessions here before, I got so upset, my, my blood went so boiling, that I simply had to address some of the nonsense that you guys heard before here, right? So that you do not commit blogging or social media suicide by following some of those instructions. Okay? So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to quit my conversation and, and talk about that. And in order to do that, I'll do it in a very specific way. So, first of all, what would be the benefit for you in staying here today and listening to my conversation. Hopefully, I will help you be a better blogger, better podcaster, make money, get a bigger audience than what you had before, and be overall more successful. And as I said, I'm not an expert in the field. I don't consider myself to be an expert, but based on the people who were speaking before, some things must be said, okay? and. You know, in contrast to some of those people, you know, if you speak on a topic, you can do it in one of two ways. Number one, hopefully results, right? As I said, I don't consider myself successful, but compare my results to the other people's results and judge for yourself. And number two is meeting and learning from the best people in the field and extracting their knowledge and trying to utilize it in the best way possible, because success needs traces. Don't go study mediocrity, because that's going to create only more mediocrity. You want to be mediocre? I, I would really hope not. So you'd want to learn from the best. That's how I try to do it. And that's why, with that kind of measure, I don't consider myself to be successful at all. Yet, here's some result that I've accomplished in the last two years. I've been uh, online for about uh, a little less than three years, started the website uh, for about six or seven months, then eight or nine months later I started the blog, another six or seven months I started uh, the podcast, and so I've been podcasting for, say, less than two years, and here's some of the results. Last summer I got $30,000 worth of training in NASA. I got, honestly, a million dollar network. I met some of the richest people in the world, people like Peter Diamandis, the guy who sends people in space on the International Space Station with his company called International Space Adventures, the guy who is the head of the XPRIZE Foundation, the people who did the competition for sending the team in space, the first private team ever. And now Richard Branson bought them and is doing the, 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 the uh, spaceport in New Mexico and is going to be sending people up for $200,000 a pop. I met people like, such as Ray Kurzweil. Ray Kurzweil was recently featured on the Super Bowl commercial, the guy who put the voice in every one of your single form, the guy who created object recognition software. The first time it was used for, for, for the help of blind people, to people such as Stevie Wonder, who was his first customer. And then eventually he went on to invent the Kurzweil synthesizer, which for those who are musicians know probably, you know, all the, the, the best people in the field, like. Rolling Stones and anyone else like that, Paul McCartney, they're using it. And that's the best known singularitarian probably in futurist in the world right now. I met people like Steve Wozniak. I rode in the Google Robocar. Um, I decided not to land the shuttle simulator because it's an old technology and it was about to be retired and I had better things to do at that time. Okay? Um, <laughs> I had the, the chance to to, um, to get 
thousands of dollars, say this camera, for example. Uh, uh, a blog reader of my blog decided to send me $2,000 just a couple weeks ago so that I can buy a camera and I can record this so that he can watch it. And um, I've been very fortunate to uh, tweet and get airplane tickets to places such as uh, Silicon Valley or to Moscow, which actually I ended up turning down just last week. So that's some of the results I want to share with you. What I'm not doing here is I'm not promising you'll be able to do that tomorrow. So if you think, and I'm going to also make you very uncomfortable and I'm going to challenge you. Right, so if you think it's going to be easy and pleasant and comfortable, just follow these guys. And, you know, find yourself a better place to be. I'm all for that. We don't want to talk to the wrong people. So, um, okay, so how did I do what I did? And, and again, um, as I said, I don't consider myself to be successful. Uh, but in terms of traffic on, on blogging, I'll tell you a couple of things. Um, I've had just 200 people short of 100,000 unique visitors a month. Uh, my best day was almost 10,000 unique visitors from across the world. Um, my most successful <coughs> podcast episode had 50,000 downloads in three months. Uh, and I'll tell you how I did it, so you can do it too, because it's honestly, it's not because of my uh, drop-dead gorgeous good looks and my amazing hair. It's, it's because of strategy and focused effort that I did what I did, and planning, and, and, and pushing as hard as possible. And you know what? I think most of us can do that stuff. So in order to do that, I'm going to hopefully briefly run you through my personal story, and that's kind of very personal, and I'm going to be sharing stuff that I haven't shared before publicly, let alone on video. And uh, so, uh, but, but one of the principles is, you know, you, you have to, I've discovered this, you have to do what you fear the most if you want to make a difference. You have to embrace your fear and you have to go for it. And, and you have to do what you think is hard and impossible. And you have to be uncomfortable. Unless I'm kicking and screaming, I know that I'm not doing something right. So usually when I'm making any progress, I'm usually whining and kicking and screaming and complaining. And then, you know, a few weeks later, I look back and I'm like, I can't believe I did this. It's impossible. Yeah, but now it's already done. So, and how did you do it? Because you pushed yourself to do the uncomfortable thing. So again, if you want to be comfortable, if you want not to be challenged, if you want to keep going the way you have been going with your blogging and your podcasting and you're satisfied with that, go to another session. I want to suggest ways that you can be better in any way possible. And then finally, I want to conclude with the new world and the old world that's going away in the new world. The new world in which technology can remove everything. I saw people who have stepped on the moon. I saw people who are working on the future to do synthetic biology that can change your sex, your color, your race, your age, that can heal your, your wounds, your cancers, and hopefully uh, make you live forever. And that's totally insane. But it is being worked on right now. And it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen the day after tomorrow. But it's coming. And that's what the singularity is all about. That's what transhumanism is all about. And people in Silicon Valley are working on it because that's where the first trillion years are going to be made. That's where the big bucks are. And that's where the future is for all of us. And by the way, just let me call on one person here. Thank you for um, Eric Boyd for being here. Eric is a fantastic guy. He's one of the co-founders of StumbleUpon. He is the one of the co-founders of StumbleUpon. He's the president of uh, HackLab.to. He's a, an altogether super cool guy. He's the founder of SenseBridge. And he's a common speaker on issues such as uh, uh, hacking and cyborg. So he's the guy on cyborg and hacking and electronic jewelry. So thanks for being here, Eric. I appreciate it. Um, I'm just here to see you. Okay. <laughs> so let's see if it's worth your time. Um, so what's my story? Very briefly, just to share with you, to, to show you that, as I said, it's not a result of my good looks and my incredible hairdo. It's a result of effort and struggle, actually. So, you know, I, I have 
one of my fears was how can you start a podcast if you have a freaking Eastern European accent? You know, isn't that ridiculous? I mean, who's going to listen to you, right? Um, so I was born in Bulgaria. Um, when I was 13 and a half, my mom passed away from cancer. Um, my dad started drinking afterwards. And nine months later, we had a big fight with him, and I left the house. I was 13 and a half, 14. I was very lucky. I actually, uh, before my mom died, she, she made her sister promise that she would force me to study math and be it as good as I could possibly be at it so that I can apply to what was at the time the best high school in Bulgaria and which had uh, very tough uh, entry requirements for math and literature. And my aunt, you know, forced me and tricked me and, 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 and all, in no other ways so that I do about half the math problems that her other students did and I eventually passed in and, and squeaked in in that high school and cruised in there. And that's where I learned English and, and Russian and, and all those other things. And so, after I finished uh, high school, I decided um, I was conscripted to the army. By the way, in Bulgaria, it's the law, or it's just it was the law. You either go to the army or you go to jail. That's that's the choice, right? You know, I'm not a big fan of jails, so even though I had problems with authority, I had to go to the army. In the army, I spent one year, one month, and 26 days. And there were days that I didn't think I'm going to make it, honestly. Even though I was the most, one of the most awarded soldiers, I was at the same time one of the most punished ones because I tend to speak uh, and I don't bullshit, I don't beat around the bush. And in the army, that's the worst thing you can do because when you have a senior officer, he's always right. And when you're right, again, rule number one, the senior officer is always right. And in war situation, actually, you get shot sometimes on the spot for speaking or disobeying orders. And I did tend to kind of have my visions and views on how things should be done. So after the army, I uh, started working as a hotel uh, receptionist in the first private hotel in Bulgaria. Um, I applied to a bunch of universities abroad. I was very fortunate <coughs> I was accepted to eight uh, universities in the States. I was accepted to the University of Auckland in New Zealand, only thanks to my good high school background, which, by the way, um, went deeper and further into the material than people here go in university. Right? But that's the old system. That's changed now too. Um, I didn't have any money though, right? So um, Oakland University was going to cost me 30 grand. When I left Bulgaria, after I sold everything that I owned, I had about $3,000. When I bought my plane ticket, I had about 2000 The only place I could go in the States and get a student visa was West Virginia because uh, the tuition was 1200 bucks, and I had about 800 bucks left for me to survive for that term. So I spent a year living in the United States. I traveled across the East Coast. By the way, the best time I ever had in the U.S. was rickshaw pusher in Atlantic City on the boardwalk. I swear, <laughs> the most fun I've ever had. The most incredible people I met, and it was fantastic. The only thing is that I did get disappointed a little bit from the U.S. You know, I came from the Eastern Bloc, I was like, well, we want the freedom, land of opportunity. You know, now I know that that place is Canada for me. I cannot begin telling you how much I love Canada. For me, you know, Canada is the best place. <coughs> so anyway, so I ended up coming here. I uh, did an undergraduate at the University of Toronto. I did philosophy. I started with philosophy. I had very strong uh, stress on ethics. I, I did... Um, uh, express interest in ethics at times of war, just war theory, war and morality, things like that. Um, you can't do politics unless you're very good at economics, so I had to do um, economics. So I ended up graduating with joint specialist in political science and philosophy, minor in economics.